welcome to the Pooch Parenting Podcast, a podcast for parents with dogs. I'm Michelle Stern, a certified professional dog trainer, mom, and former teacher. Living with kids and dogs at the same time can feel like a circus. I know because I lived it too. Join us as we interview a variety of experts and parents to discuss topics that will make parenting with dogs easier, safer, and less chaotic. Also, you can love living with your dog again. I'll always keep it real which might even mean that you hear the messiness of life in the background on occasion, but at least you know you're not alone. In today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about something that I think is missing from a lot of due date groups online and even in prenatal care. And then I'd like to offer a couple of solutions so that parents can start to feel more confident as they bring home a new baby when their dog was their first baby. I hope you enjoy. The focus of my work is to support parents who are raising kids and dogs together. And because of that, I spend a lot of time online, occasionally offering free advice to people who are in due date support groups or other types of pregnancy or adoption platforms where people are trying to express some concerns about how their dog will react to their new baby. And unfortunately, their concerns are often minimized by other members of the group because they want families to make the assumption that the dog will just figure it out and that the dog will be okay. But a lot of people, especially the types of clients that I see, often have dogs that are what I call a little, quote, extra, unquote. So these kind of extra dogs are special and they might have anxiety or a lot of energy or they might get hyper aroused or maybe they're fearful or shy or they're a newly adopted dog who the family doesn't really know very well. And even sometimes I work with clients who get dogs from fantastic breeders and they're still not sure how their dog is going to respond to baby. And so What I think is really missing from a lot of these online support groups, and even actually in prenatal care in general, is that a lot of people are not normalizing that it is okay to be worried about how dogs are going to react to new baby. So nobody really talks about the unexpected situations that can arise with dogs and newborns. They don't really talk about safe interactions between dogs and infants and what that looks like. And instead, people share photographs of their newborn baby lying on top of their dog, which is so dangerous. But yet, if those people are offered unsolicited advice about the danger of that, they get defensive and they don't really want to hear about how they could be doing things differently because they feel lucky and nothing bad has happened. And so what I would love to do is try to educate people about how to normalize different management strategies, for example, that might prevent a dog from making a mistake or harming the baby or normalizing getting prepared ahead of time before the baby even comes. Because after all, we do a lot ahead of time. You read books about prenatal care and you see specialists and you take special prenatal vitamins and you set up a baby registry and you buy all kinds of items to get your house ready and yet you don't necessarily do things to get your dog ready and I would like to change that I would like to shift the common approach to having a baby to include getting the dog ready because at the end of the day you're going to be a lot more stressed if you're unsure about your dog's behavior about your dog's anxiety about your dog's safety around newborns maybe they're just too excited and if you don't have an action plan for how to approach that then I think you're not going to have as much confidence as you would as if you had been prepared in advance and when you bring home a baby My goal as a dog and child specialist is really to help you enjoy your new baby more and worry about your dog less. I wanna start by saying, I see you. If you're pregnant, if you're using a surrogate, if you're adopting a baby, you are all going through a very similar experience, which is that you are about to jump into a chasm of the unknown. You don't know what it will be like to live with a baby day in and day out, and you don't know how your dog is going to respond to the same situation. 
So before I offer any solutions, I just again want to normalize and name some of the concerns that a lot of people have when it comes to integrating a newborn baby into family life with a dog. Now, these are things that my clients have told me. They are comments that I've received in my memberships and in my paid programs. They are responses that people have answered to questions in my email list, and they're real and you may be feeling them too. So I just wanted to make sure that you know that I see you and some of the common concerns that you might be having. So let's go through a few of them and then I'm gonna tell you the names of some of my students um, and what some of their big concerns were because I want you to know I'm not just making this stuff up. So some people, for example, are concerned about safety or aggression. So for example, if your dog has a bite history, you may naturally be concerned that the dog might bite the baby or might growl at visitors who are coming over to visit you or maybe you have a postpartum doula coming to the house and you're really worried about how the dog is going to respond to any of these potential caregivers that you bring home so safety and aggression are very very real concerns jealousy is another big one and we're going to talk about that more at in depth in a few minutes Behavioral changes are a biggie because you're not really sure if your dog's behavior is going to change in an unpredictable way when the baby arrives or maybe after living day in day out with the baby 24 seven, because a lot of people say to me, oh, I'm, I'm not worried. My dog likes kids. It's going to be fine. But you've never necessarily lived with one before. And for those of you who have lived with kids before, I'm sure you understand that it's really hard to get a break. And the same is true from our dog's perspective as well. Some parents are even worried about allergens or hygiene because dogs are dirty sometimes. The good news on that one is that there have been studies that show that kids who grow up with dogs have a stronger immune system, but you still may be worried. And so I don't wanna minimize it just because we also have some data to say it's not such a big deal because Maybe it is to you, so I see that. You might be concerned that your dog is going to be territorial. Now that can go back to some of the aggression stuff we talked about before, but it's possible that your dog might guard places in the house. Maybe the sofa is not a place they wanna share. Maybe they resist other people getting into the bed, for example. And so when you're living with a child, as that infant develops into a toddler, toddlers are very unpredictable and a lot of dogs can get very uncomfortable because they don't know where that baby is going to go and when. And so if they resource guard spaces or act territorial or aggressive over you know, their personal space in any way, this is definitely a legitimate concern that a lot of people have. Sometimes you may not be sure how your dog is going to respond to things that we see as predictable in terms of child development. So for example, a newborn baby has a higher pitched cry than an older baby. And we don't know if your dog will be sensitive to those different types of sounds. We don't know how your dog is going to respond if your baby has an involuntary grasp reflex and grabs a handful of fur. Some dogs are gonna to take to that much less kindly than others. And so these unpredictable reactions can sometimes be very unnerving for parents because they're just really not sure what to expect. Other parents are worried about time management because you're never ever going to be as busy as you are once you have kids. So if you think you're busy now, you're gonna be a lot more busy once baby shows up. And that can be really hard if your dog is needy or needs a lot of exercise or mental stimulation. You have to begin to juggle how to use your time when you are living with an infant. And your dog might have a really hard time being flexible in terms of how you spend your time. They may not understand that they have to wait for dinner while you're dealing with an exploded diaper. Baby safety, of course, is a concern for almost everybody. And some parents are very, very worried that they may have to give up their dog because a dog that bites a baby, unfortunately, doesn't have a very long lifespan. And I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you. 
there's a lot of guilt involved in making a huge decision like that. And some of my clients tell me that their family members are pressuring them to get rid of their dog because maybe it has a bite history or it's made them uncomfortable. And they're not necessarily trusting us to know what's best for our own family. And that can be very frustrating. So basically what I just wanted to summarize here were a bunch of the different big feelings that a lot of expecting, adopting, and parents using surrogates might experience when their dog was their first baby. And now I wanna read you the names of a few of my students and some of their concerns because like I said before, I wanna make sure you know these are these are real human beings that I work with all the time. Amy has a very special dog who she rescued and has a lot of big feelings about things. And Amy told me that she wanted support because her dog, quote, hates kids. But her sister has a newborn, and so she wanted to learn from me how to help her dog be more comfortable and, of course, be safe around her sister's baby. Christina has a huge dog, a 100-pound dog dog who gets very aroused and so she was worried about size related issues because you know a giant dog like that could accidentally step on the baby and hurt them even though they had no intention of doing that janessa was worried about her dog and baby jessica was worried because in her first pregnancy she felt that she needed to do better in terms of working on getting her dog comfortable behind a barrier and she wanted to refresh some work about getting her dog used to wearing a muzzle because she wanted some backups. Stephanie worked with me because she's planning on trying to have a baby. She's not pregnant yet and she wanted to plan for the future because she knows that her dog is going to take some time. Emmy was worried that her unpredictable baby would be too much for her super anxious dogs. Joanne was worried because her dog is super protective of her and she's incredibly worried about jealousy. Luke has taken some other classes from me before, is a current client again, and his dog is a reactive rescue with a bite history. And this dog, again, has a history of being jealous. And Patricia has a very cool dog who is one of those extra dogs that I talk about, who is a herding breed dog. And she is a little bit concerned with the reactivity that can come with that. And also the fact that herding breed dogs can be a little difficult to live with and might chase the baby around the house, might be reactive to the, dog, the baby in a swing, for example, might be interested in toys that move and all that comes with living with a herding breed dog. But there is one commonality that a lot of my students come to me with, and that is that they are concerned about how their dog is gonna react in terms of jealousy issues. And so I wanna dive in a little bit and talk about a program that I'm offering. It's going to start mid-September. I won't be offering it again until January. So if you are expecting uh, between now and January, you really need to sign up now so that you don't miss your shot. But I am gonna be teaching a free boot camp for parents. It's a pre-baby boot camp, and it's all about preventing dog jealousy. One of the things I want you to remember is that the reason I like to teach content is that I want my students to feel more confident living together with a dog and a baby. So on this particular boot camp that I'm offering, we're going to focus on jealousy, what it looks like, why it happens, why waiting to prepare your dog is a mistake, how preparing your dog for your new baby can alleviate some of your dog mom guilt when the baby arrives, because you are gonna be worried that your dog will be jealous and if we don't take the time to do some preparation ahead of time, they may experience some more of these jealousy types of behaviors. Now, some people are gonna come after me a little bit and they're gonna tell me that I'm anthropomorphizing and maybe dogs don't get jealous, but we are gonna talk about a variety of behaviors that dogs do demonstrate when they are seeking attention, for example, and what that looks like and what the risks of that are based on the size of your dog, for example. So it is relevant, so I'm gonna call it jealousy. I'm gonna say dogs do get jealous, but I did wanna just put a little caveat in there that some people may disagree with that label specifically.
We're also going to talk a little bit about strategies for how to keep your family safe during sleep, during daily routines, etc. So inside of this free boot camp, we have eight different lessons. Uh, they include a live Q&A with me. We're going to have prizes and a fun community. And last time I offered it, it was so much fun. There was so much energy in the group and the people were just so relieved because I saw them and I know the concerns that they have and I'm trying to address them so that they can more confidently raise their infant and their dog together. So I would love to invite you to join us. At the time of this recording, the next boot camp begins on September 12th, 2023. It won't be offered again until January of 2024. And if you would like to sign up, you can go to poochparenting.net slash jealousy. If you listen to this podcast episode after the window has closed for this boot camp, don't worry, I will have a wait list instead at that same website address. So you can get on a wait list for the next one. Hopefully that works out. Otherwise you can reach out and work with me privately. But again, poochparenting.net slash jealousy. I would love to see you inside that fun program. Again, it's going to be a great live community. We will support each other. You're going to really see that you are not alone. Of course, parties are better with friends. So if you are in any of those due date groups where some of this information is missing, or if you have a good relationship with your OBGYN or your doula or your midwife, please tell them about this so that they can let their students, their patients, their friends know about it because so many families have dogs and nobody deserves to feel like they have to figure this all out on their own. So I invite you to join us to the pre-baby bootcamp on preventing dog jealousy. Again, poochparenting.net slash jealousy, and I hope to see you on the inside. I want to make sure you feel seen. I've got you. Take care. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast player and leave a review. But even better yet, tell a friend. Are you in some mom's groups perhaps? Or maybe you're friendly with your pediatrician. Please let them know that resources like this exist because the information that I share with my people goes beyond what most baby books offer. And a lot of parents need support you'd be doing them a favor. Thanks again.